So most people know that the three angles inside of a triangle will add up to 180 degrees. So in this diagram we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C must equal 180 degrees. But how do we know that? How do we know that for sure? So what I would like to do today is I would like to show you two different proofs that prove that angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. Both proofs are pretty simple and they are both really closely related. And so here's the first one. The first thing I'd like to do is I would like to take this bottom side of this triangle and I would like to extend that into a line. So we'll turn the bottom of that triangle into a line. The next part is let's take this point up here at angle A and let's draw a line through this point of the, this corner of the triangle and let's make this line parallel to the first line that we drew. So we can just say that it's parallel. So there's our line. So we've got now two parallel lines kind of on either side of this triangle. Then let's extend the other two sides. Let's start by extending this side of the triangle to make it into a line with this red marker. And let's extend this side of the triangle turning it into a line with this green marker. And now we've created some new angles here. We're only going to use two of these new angles. Let's name this first angle over here, let's name that angle D, and let's name this one angle E. So, the first step in this proof, once we have our diagram set up here, you can still see the original triangle in the middle. The first step is to notice something about angles A, D, and E. If I bring this paper down, and line it up right here, you can see the angles A, D, and E all form a straight line. When they're put together, they form a straight line. So anytime angles together, when they're put together, form a straight line, you know that those angles are going to add up to 180 degrees. So that's step one. Angle A plus angle D plus angle E equals 180 because they form a straight line. So already we can see how close we are to what we're trying to prove. We have A already there, but somehow we have to show a connection between angle B and D and angle C and E. And once we do, we're set. And so to do that, let's take a look at angle B and D. And I notice they're in between these two parallel lines. And so this whole portion here between the parallel lines, this is the interior portion. Outside of those is the exterior, but these two angles are in between them, so they are interior angles in this little diagram. I also notice that they are on opposite sides of this red line. This red line crosses the two parallel lines, so this red line is a transversal. And D is on the left side of it. B is on the right side of this red line. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, so they're on alternate sides and they're on the interior portion of this diagram so we can say that they're alternate interior angles and hopefully you already know from previous lessons that anytime you have alternate interior angles it, uh, inside of parallel lines those alternate interior angles are congruent angles so angle D is congruent or exactly the same as angle B so now we've shown the connection between B and D Finally, we have to look at C and E, and in the same way, they are also congruent. Now let's focus on the green transversal. We can see that C and E are still on the interior portion of this diagram. They're between the parallel lines. E is on the right side of the green transversal. C is on the left side of the green transversal, which means they are also alternate interior angles. And so angle E and angle C are congruent angles. Alternate interior angles are always congruent when you have parallel lines. And so now we've shown the connection now between C and E, so the final step is doing a simple substitution. If we substitute uh, angle D, I'm sorry, if we substitute angle B in for angle D, and if we substitute angle C in for angle E, 
we've got exactly what we were trying to prove. Proving that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. So that's the proof one. The second proof is going to be very similar to that. And in the second proof, we're, I'm going to start by doing the same thing. I'm going to start by extending the bottom of this triangle into a line. I'm going to draw a line through this top point that is parallel to the bottom line. I'm going to extend the other two sides of the triangle just like I did last time. I'll extend this side with a red line. And I'll extend the other one with a green line. So basically I've just drawn two transversals again that cross those two parallel lines just like in the first setup. Last time we had angles D and E but this time we're not going to use those two. We're going to use these three angles up here this time. Let's call this one angle F. Let's call this one angle G and let's call this one angle H. And just like the beginning of the last proof I can see that angle F, G, and H come together at this point and they together they form a straight line. So angle F, G, and H must add up to 180 degrees. So that's step one. Angle G plus angle H plus angle F add up to 180 degrees. They form a straight line. Step two we have to, just like we did in the last time, we have to somehow show how angle G and A are the same, B and H are the same, C and F are the same, and if we can do that, we can do substitution right at the end and prove that A plus B plus C equals 180. Let's start with angle A and G. Here's angle A, here's angle G, and I hope you can recognize that A and G are a type of angle pair called vertical angles. They share the same vertex and they're on opposite sides. And anytime you have vertical angles, you know that vertical angles are congruent. So angle G is congruent to angle A because they're vertical angles. Next, how about angle B and angle H? How are they related? Well, in these two angles, these two angles are corresponding angles. If you focus on just the red transversal here, if you look at where angle B is in this intersection down here, it's kind of in the upper right out of these four angles, here, 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 and here, angle B is in the upper right position of that intersection. Well, if we slide that right up here, angle B would fall right into this spot where angle H is. So angle B and angle H are corresponding. They're in the same position in these two different intersections. So angle H and angle B are corresponding angles and hopefully you know that corresponding angles are always congruent. And so now we've shown the connection between those two. Now let's try C and F and it's going to be exactly the same. Focus on the green transversal this time. I can see that angle C out of these four positions here, 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 and here Angle C is in the position that is in the upper left position of this intersection. If I were to slide this angle straight up here to this intersection, C would fall right over angle F. They would coincide perfectly. And that's because C and F are also corresponding angles. They lie in the exact same position. So angle F and angle C must be congruent. Corresponding angles are always congruent when there are parallel lines. And so, if we just do the substitution then, we know that A and G are congruent, so substitute A in for G. We know that B and H are congruent, so substitute B in for H. We know that F and C are congruent, so substitute C in for F, and you get angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. So a different proof very closely closely related uh, but two different proofs showing that the three angles inside a triangle must add up to 180 degrees.